Good evening, everybody. It is October 5th. It is about 12.45, and I'm just getting done with getting this bike completely dialed. As you saw on the ride video when I first got it, took it on a test to make sure it doesn't any, do anything weird before I put money into it. And since then, I have done the suspension. I've gone through all the jetting. I did a new exhaust, um, adjusted all the controls, got rid of all the GPS stuff, and just got it dialed in. I got those blinkers on the fender that are kind of Mickey Mouse, but I found a, a universal rear fender mount that will house the blinkers and the license plate and bring it down underneath and make it look a lot more Sano. Uh, so in doing that, I had to bring the bike up to work. And um, on the way up there, I've been towing bikes around for, I don't know, let's see. I've been towing bikes around for a good 30 years. I've never lost a bike off a trailer or off the back of a bike hitch on a car. But I lost this one off the hitch, if uh, you've seen the pictures here, and it did significant damage to the exhaust and the plastics. It actually bent the exhaust pipe because it landed full force on the exhaust pipe. And then I was on a blind turn on this mountain road, and I had to drive about 100 feet to get to a turnout, and I just heard it back there dragging. And as you can see, it sanded the aluminum right off this muffler. So with one day left, I ordered a new muffler, and they got it to me in one day. And um, I got all the jetting done, got everything done, brought it back down the hill today, and uh, made it down without dropping it off the hitch. And I test rode it this evening, because tomorrow is gonna be uh, a morning trip out to Pahrump, and I'm gonna get to ride with my oldest brother and his son. And uh, I did that one ride in Havasu with his son a year ago, the one that beat me to death. Uh, but I haven't ridden with my older brother since I was probably 13. I'm 51 now, so it's kind of a cool thing. Um, he settled down out there and um, he got himself an XR400 and um, I got this of course, and that's what this has all been about, getting to go riding with my oldest brother and then kind of getting back into it after being off for about four years. So I got it all done, all ready to go. I'm all packed up for the morning to head out. And I just thought as usual, you know, I'll take you guys with me and um, see if we can make this an interesting video. So thanks for watching. I'm going to go to bed, and I'll see you tomorrow as I head out to prom. Okay, so the reason why this bike came off the hitch and dented my car and tore up this pipe, broke that blinker, got rocks in the plastic, is, and got leaves there, because these tie-downs actually pull back a little. Like normally you pull forward on a dirt bike and the front wheel keeps it up against the back of your cab or what have you or your trailer where your front tire goes but there's none of that so these tie downs pull back a hair side to side it's super super sturdy but if you were to pull this bike backwards without this strap here it would roll off and that's what happened i made the left the hitch shifted because there's some slack in this hitch right the hitch shifted and that rear tire popped onto the ground gaining instant traction, pulling it back, handlebars and everything hit all this. And um, that's why it fell off. So I tested it last night on the way down from work, down from the mountain, and I kept my eye on it the whole time in the rearview mirror, and it did not move once I put this extra tie-down strap here. So not only is that third strap helping, one more final measure is I'm gonna take this, come along here, and I hooked it to the frame of the car, and it's going to keep it from wagging side to side like this in that play in the hitch. So we're going to go with that. We're all loaded up. Tools. Fuel, which could be scary. Bedding, clothes, computer. Gear bag in the back, right? Yep. Let's go have some fun. Oh, you got water droplets. Then all this was for nothing. What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Been too long, bro. Been too long.
that was awesome. Hey, so. Dude, that was awesome, bro. Old man's trails. I know you guys are dying for something real, but. Hey, I had fun. Well, good morning, everybody. It is Sunday the 7th. It's about 12 o'clock. And uh, we just kind of slept in, rested, listened to church online, went out to breakfast. And we're just now getting geared up to go on our final ride of the weekend, which will be the longest one. Uh, we are in the city or the town of Pahrump. And last night, we went all the way up that canyon up in there, up to just below the cloud level. Today, we're going to go around the other side of these rocks in front of us, try to go up over into what's called Carpenter Canyon, see how far up we can get. Uh, it's, we found out that if you get to the top, you can see Vegas from the other side, so we may do that. So we have a long ways to go on street till we get there, but that looks like what we're going to do yesterday. It was a great ride, just an update on the bike. Um, it still had a pretty good flat spot even after I dropped the uh, Pilot down to a 35. So, and I noticed on the ride under deceleration, it would backfire. So I hopped down there and I opened up the fuel screw to two and a quarter, which is a quarter past the pipe manufacturer's recommendation. And it made it about 80% better, more bottom end. And it was just a blast to ride. It still backfired a tiny bit. So I went another quarter. So I'm two and a half out on the fuel screw, um, which may be because... It is a 307 instead of a 250. We're needing a little more fine tuning on the fuel. So we're gonna give that a try today and see how it goes. And we adjusted all of our chains, filled up all of our gas. We're gonna be leaving here in a few minutes. So we are at our first rest stop, probably about 4,500 feet. Been going for about 30 minutes up above Pahrump Valley. And you can, I don't know, you know, this is a hill. And uh, what we're going to try to do is negotiate our way up over one of these peaks and see if we can see the town of Las Vegas. So in the meantime, we're fixing a minor fuel leak over here in the pits. Awesome.
said that, that when we went through that second time and I was behind you. Yeah. I was all nervous, dude. I'm all cold, and I'm like, all right, I'm just once I hit it, I'm just throttle. So make sure I make it out. And so when I hit it, water's just. Yeah. So I bet in the GoPro, water's gonna be like, cause it soaked my hands. Yeah, I went in. I went in coasting, and then as soon as I got underwater, I just went. Brrr! Yeah. But yeah, my hands are frozen. My legs are frozen. My, yeah, my butt, dude. Well, the heels are coming off my boots. Oh. So yeah. Well, that's why I asked Wait a you. You guys got wet. Dude, we I went through like a two foot crossing. deep. <laughs> I am so glad I didn't go up there. It's like this. It's like straight down and then boosh, so straight no up. There is, we didn't see the option the first time, but we want to get on a GoPro, so we went through it again. Well, I wanted to get you coming back a second time, too. But you went that other way. But I think on the way back, like I went through it, did a Yui and went back. Yeah. You went the high spot. Oh, I was, oh, but it's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I still got us all. Yeah, on. I think that one will be good because I tried to be really close to you. Perfect. That's and, why I gunned it. And were you close here? Yeah, I got pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Because the GoPro is so wide angle. If you're uh -huh. 10 feet, it looks like 30. Yeah. I'm gonna lay down my ground in the sun. Like, oh, feels so good, man. My boots are, uh, they're like a wetsuit now. I gotta warm up that water inside. Yeah, of mine are soaked. <sighs> Oh, and we're still recording. So. It's trying. Yes, you can try. And you're not doing any gas, right? No. I'm just tired. Yeah, it kills, it wears you to death. So I'm just sitting here, they're back there uh, checking their gas or something, and I'm waiting for them, and I'm just showing you a shot of this beautiful canyon with the clouds in the background and the sun up here. Just a great shot, perfectly quiet. They're back up there somewhere. Maybe I'll uh, shoot up there and check it out, see what's up. Yeah, it's been a while, so let's go take a look. You want me to start that one too? No, it quit on him and then it sounds like it wants to catch, but I wonder if you got the crap in your carb clogging something. Do you have more. a vent? A fuel, do you have a vent? Can you loosen the screw and flush it or no? Yeah, I can't get to it though without pulling the carb. Because it's like a big, it's like a 13 or 14 millimeter thing and it's bottom. up against the thingy where I can't fit a wrench. Okay, we'll get this figured All out. Alright, so as it turns out, this thing's 
kind air of filters dry at least. firing like do 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 and then no, it air filters wet dies so we've determined it's getting gas we're about to determine if the spark plug's good and from there we're going to go carburation and make sure we don't have an electrical issue there's, there's water it's wet like if you go down onto the air filter yeah so, it's wet on the bottom this couldn't be a better place to have stopped and work on a dirt bike so that's what we're doing we're going to try to get this thing fired up i wonder if you pull that air filter out it's going to fire i see something over here piece of trash we can take with us yep looks like part of a skid pan off a razor big rock popped up and knocked it knocked it off but we'll we'll just hack that home and off she comes Yo, so don't tell me he took the bike apart and carried it up oh there it is that's a true story about malcolm smith okay i don't have a spark plug wrench so i don't know what to do next then all this was for nothing <laughs> <laughs> So after all that, nobody has a spark plug wrench, so we can't check if there's spark. So we're gonna pull off the air filter because it's soaking it's wet. Still, it's still, it's still got. So it, me, it, it's actually when I push up, it was giving me beads of water. So I bet if he pops that, yeah, it'll fire. So we're thinking water. Why don't you just pop? Interrupting the the ignition pop inside the cylinder. And then maybe just. Oh, you got water droplets, and what happened is it all shaked down to the bottom and sucked into your carburetor and it's interrupted the ignition inside of the yeah, compression see chamber. See all that water? Look at that. Yeah. All right, so. Right. Let's see if it works. Plug but you're going to have to put oh, the... Do you think there's a... <laughs> plug that in. Like, dude, I'm telling you, the funniest thing ever... When I was watching that guy kick over that exit, Because you got no gas in What about your starter? Hold it wide open. There's no gas in it. There's no gas in it because okay. the tank's off, um, which we knew, but we thought it might fire. Back on. I do, good thing this is a brand new battery. What about a little choke? Just to play, who, who knows? Yeah. There we go. Probably got to clean out all the crap. Yeah. Like we got that gas, that water out maybe. Feel right now? It had water in there. The water, bro. Yep. All right. So now that our three brains have worked about as well as one brain, we are gonna put her back together and get back on the trail. Here we go. All right. So I'm taking these socks that I have with me that I pack my waters in to keep them cool, and I'm squeezing all of the water out of his filter. Till it's bone dry and then we're gonna head back out. So my sock treatment.
perfect end to a perfect ride here. So the battery died on the trail, but I just wanted to update y'all that we are back in the garage. And we had gone, like I said, all the way past the Brown Mountains, around and then up in the canyon, about, you know, below the cloud line. We were way up there. So now, Sunday night, we're gonna go to dinner, come back and lock and load. I'm gonna load, split to where I live. Robert's gonna load, split back to Havasu, and my bro lives here. The ride red bike, he lives here. So it really was an awesome time of riding. And uh, for a bunch of old guys, I'm 51, my older brother's 54. And of course, Robert's a young body. Oh, you might recognize this. That is that big red truck in tow with my little 1500 Tahoe a while back. And it's still here, it still works. So, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, overall, this little bike did flawless the whole time. Continuing to dial it in here and there, and it is just a kick in the pants to ride. Even at high elevation, I just, after resting for a while, I'd yank the choke and start in one kick, kill the choke, idle perfectly. Much better than when I got it. So, I think I got it pretty dialed. And the suspension feels great. I'm gonna do a couple clicker things in the rear. But, um, very good. 22 year old bike on this fat body. So, thanks for watching, everybody. It's been a great time. We're going to dinner. <laughs>